So I'm very excited that finally I found an easy way to explain uh, JWT and also take you step by step on how to implement JWT in Spring Boot. This, this is something I've taken some time to put together. So it's going to be really easy and it's going to be smooth and step by step. And I, and I also outlined all the steps here on my website. So in case you miss out anything, you need some of the code snippets, you have them right here in my website. This is exactly the step I'm going to be following. So we are going to be doing this together. So if you are joining me for the first time, uh, please hit on the subscribe button below and you don't miss any updates from me. And one thing about JSON Web Token is, is that it's not a replacement for username and password, but it builds on top of the normal username and password credential. So you have to know about Spring Security first and then know how to implement JWT on top of Spring Security. So without further ado, let's just get started. So I'm using IntelliJ and now I've opened uh, Spring Initializer. Let me just shift this a little bit. I've opened Spring Initializer and I'm simply going to start a new project. So again, please uh, follow me step by step because I'm going to be explaining. So here, there is a starting point at this point. So the group is going to become the kinds and the genius. And I'm going to just call this JWT demo. All right, so uh, demo project for JWT, and that should be fine. So now we, are, we need to add three dependencies, as you can see uh, in the step right here, Spring Web, Spring Security, and Lombok. So Lombok is kind of, it makes it easier for us to write this boilerplate code, so this POJO. So you can also do without Lombok if you want. So the next one is Spring Web. Uh, it's it's going to be second one. And the next one is Spring Security. Let me just type security and we have it, okay? So we are going to be using additional two more dependencies later on, but for now, this tree is okay. So I'm going next and every other thing should be exactly the same. I would like to keep the windows side by side so that I can actually be seeing the step by step uh, while I do it. All right. Uh, maybe I can just keep this one this side. How about that? Okay. Actually, I can just leave it the way it is. All right, so this is where we are right now. So step two says create a class that extends the web security configurer adapter, right? Anytime you have to do with security, whether it's um, credentials with password or you want to do JWT, you must always extend the configurer. So this is more or less like a configuration file. So I'm going to go to SRC main Java and I'm going to go to this package and say new Java class. And I'm going to call this class um, web. Let me just call it, um, I call it um, security. Security configurer. Let me just call it, actually the name is, you can give it any name you want, but so I'm just looking for a good name, a better name to give. So this class has to extend web security configurer adapter. So I'm going to say extend web security configurer adapter. So let me make a little room by shifting this backwards. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now the next thing is that you need to annotate this class with at enable web security and also at configuration because this is a configuration class and also at enable web security. Okay, perfect. Now the next step says we need to create a user details class. So this class is simply a class that implements user details service that is gonna be in charge of retrieving username and password or setting the username and password. Normally this class in, um, interfaces with a database where we have the uh, password and username stored but for now, to keep it easy, we are going to be using hard-coded username and password. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a new uh, package. I'm going to call it services. 
So this user details service class that will be interfacing with the username and password or be managing username and password. Uh, I want to put it inside services package just to organize things. It's, there is nothing, uh, there's nothing too special about it. So I'm going to call it my user details service. Okay, so that's what I call this class and is actually going to implement user details service. Okay, no second. Okay, so this class, of course, you need to annotate it with add service annotation. Okay, now let's keep it easy. And we have this weekly red lines. It says we need to implement the methods. So I'm going to click on the line and say implement methods. There is only one method there that says load user by username. And here now is where we are going to return a hard coded uh, user. So I'm going to simply say return new user, uh, return new user and simply give a username and a password admin and passwords, passwords. But actually this class, the, this method user takes three parameters. Okay. So the next one is the roles, you know, the roles, the roles of this user. We are not using roles like admin or user and, and manager or editor and so on. So we are not using roles. So let's just give an empty array list, new array list. Okay. So no roles implemented. So we have our service that returns a user with a hard coded username and password. Let's now follow the step because I don't want you to miss out anything. So the next step says auto wire this user detail service into the configurer class because it's going to be used in the configuration class. And also we need to override the configure method. So let's take it one by one. Let's come to the configurer class and I'm going to auto wire the user details uh, service. So I'm going to say at auto wired. I'm going to say private uh, my user detail service, user detail service. Okay. I've auto wired it in. The next thing says override the configure method and change the parameter to authentication manager builder. So what do we do? So the next thing is to override the configure method. So I'm going to simply right click and say generate and go to override method. If you are using another IDE, it may be a different way, but for now, uh, you can copy from my website, but I normally recommend you type it out yourself. It makes it uh, better, a better way to learn. So use the first one, configure web security void. And now you need to change the parameter to authentication manager builder. So instead of web security web, we are going to use authentication manager builder i'm going to call it alt just for short you can also call it authentication manager builder starting with it as a camel camel case but for now let's just use uh, the short name all right so the next step as you can see we are still in step four in the configure methods set the user details service of the authentication manager builder to the my user details service you auto wired. So I think that is clear. Uh, so I'm going to simply say uh, alt dot user details service my user uh, sorry my uh, user details service user details service. So that's this one. Actually everything is in my website with just a minor uh, difference. All right, so we've created a, a security configurer class and also uh, created the service to give us the user details. Okay, we call it the user details service. We also have authentication manager that takes this user details and handles authentication management. The next thing we need to do now is to create a password encoder. It's simply something required uh, that we can't, we can just have to do it. The password encoder simply means you don't need to send your password as plain your password as plain text. You need to encode it in some way so that hackers cannot get access to it. So we are going to create a bin, a password encoder, and it's going to be no op password encoder. Basically, we are not 
uh, encoding it in any way. Uh, because normally in production application, you need to use encoder like MD5 or some other hashing algorithm. For now, we are talking about JWT, so let's not get involved with all these other things. So public password encoder, password encoder, and we are going to just return no of password encoder. Uh, you can see already that the system is complaining. Okay, it's going to be dot get instance. Okay, so the system is already yelling at us that we cannot use such a thing. But we, this is just a demo, but in production, you actually don't use anything like this. All right, so what have we done? We've created our security configurer, created our user details, our setup configuration for authentication manager builder. And we also created a password encoder. And finally, we need a class to manage uh, authentication, Actu actually a class to generate the token. Now this class to generate the token will be able to generate the token from the user details. Okay, It's also be able to validate if the token is valid, also set the expiration time, get any details about the token. So basically we need a class that will be handling our uh, token management, if you put it that way. The authentication token management will be handled by this class. And this class contains a whole lot of methods and the code is quite robust. So instead of writing it out, I'm simply going to copy it from where I have it and paste. And I'm going to show you, you copy it from this link. But before I do that, I'm simply going to create a package where I'm going to put this class. I'm going to call it JWT utility and I'm going to place it in the, sorry. I'm going to place it in a new package. I'm going to call utils package. And I'm going to create this class. I'm going to say new Java class, JWT utility. So this is my class to handle token management, like generating, validating, setting the timeout, setting expiration and stuff like that. Uh, I think I missed out step six. Step six says for us to handle the, anything about JWT uh, tokens, we need to add two dependencies, JJWT dependency and JAXB dependency. So I'm going to my pom.xml and I'm going to go to dependencies section. Now you can also get these dependencies from Maven. So it's going to be JJWT. It's coming from JSON web token, IO.JSON web token. So I'm going to add it. And the next one is JAXB. So it's coming from uh, JAXB API. So I'm going to add it. After adding it, I'm simply going to my project and go to Maven and simply uh, think reload project. Okay, that is fine. So uh, just in case you don't know where to get dependencies from, uh, you can actually go to MPN repository. And you can find dependencies right here. You can also search for it, J, J, W, T. I think you can get it from here and you can find it maybe right here. And then, I don't know, uh, I think you can, yeah. I think this exactly, let me see, let me just expand this. This is exactly what we copied, what we created. So if you don't have autocomplete to generate the dependency for you, simply copy it from Maven repository and paste it right there. So let's go ahead to get uh, to continue. So having added these two dependencies, let's go back to our utility class. So this utility class, what is going to be the content? Um, first, this class should implement serializable. And is all, it's also going to be a component. So I'm going to annotate it with add component annotation, okay? Now, what's the content of this file? I'm going to copy it from this link. So you see, simply copy from this link. So if you click on the link, it opens up the class. <laughs> now, this is a complete class, okay? So I'm going to drag so that you can see it very clearly. So I'm going to just copy the contents of this class like this without the class name and use command C on my keyboard set back this to where it was before 
and I'm going to paste it right here. All right. So you can see that there is a whole lot. I think every other person designing JWT token or uh, building, implementing JWT tokens will always do this same thing I did now. So don't worry if you don't understand everything about it. I'm going to tell you what is important in this class. So first, let's do all the imports. Import date from java.util. Claims is coming from wherever. And the import function, uh, java.util.function, I think. JJWTS imports, import user details. We already have it. Hash map imports, import map. And I think there is a way to do all this import at once. If you remember, just let me know in the comment box. <laughs> I, I forgot. All right, so this is the utility class. You have to copy it and paste. Unless you have the strength, you can start typing it out. <laughs> so now take, take note of the methods. Get username from token. Given a token, you can retrieve the username from that token. Remember, I told you that using authentication token does not, does not replace username name and password. We are simply kind of packaging the username and password into a token so that it makes things a bit easier. So now you can also get back the username from the token. So that's what we have there. Have get expiration date from token. That one is quite clear as well. Um, another one is, is token expired, just to check if this token is, is expired because token actually is set to last for uh, a, a period of time. In this case, uh, we have, let me see. So we have token validity is 10 times 60 times 60. That is, I think is 10 hours. Uh, 60 times 60 is one hour. So 10 hours, I think. Um, and then we have uh, generate token, given the user details. So you see, you have the user details of username and password. You can generate your token from there and validate token. Okay, so I think this is clear for now. So you don't have to worry about everything here. That's just what you need to do. All right, we also need to create an authenticate API. What it means is if we go back to um, okay, so let's just go to the step. Step eight, we need to create two classes because for us to generate the token, we need username and password and that username and password will be sent as a post request and then the token will be returned to you. Okay, so that means that we need to have a request that sends the username and password and also a response that sends the token. So this request, we call it JWT request and the response is a JWT response. The response will simply contain the token. The request will contain the username and password. So normally, these requests and response, they will be classes, okay? So they are not just plain text. So I'm going to create a package. I'm, go I'm going to put these requests and response classes or models into the models package. So that's basically request and response. You send username and password and get um, the token back. So this I'm going to call JWT request. And it's simply going to contain two items private string username and private string password. Okay. So now this is what is in the request. So it's quite easy. So into, instead of doing the getters and setters manually, I'm going to simply use Lombok, uh, Lombok data annotation. And I'm going to use no ax constructor. It's going to generate all this code for us, uh, all ax constructor. Okay. So this is the class that uh, contains the request, the username and the password. And the second class is the response, which is the token. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it JWT response. And again, I'm simply going to, I'm going to put all this so that it generates the code for us. So, so here we have only one item, JWT uh, token. 
So I'm going to say private string JWT token. That's all. So we have this request class and the response class. Okay. So basically, uh, what is request uh, request and response? What the user uh, uh, gives and what he gets. He gives username and password. He gets the token back. Okay. Let's now go to create some endpoints. That's it. Uh, okay, so sorry for the distraction. So now we want to create a resource. That's information that the user will be accessing and he'll have to be authenticated, you know. So I'm going to go to the application. Um, I said, let me just create a controller class. So I'm going to say new, um, just call it home controller. So I'm going to annotate with address controller. So this is basically like every other REST controller you think about. Okay, so I'm gonna say at, uh, at get mapping. All right, so if the user goes to slash, you can say slash home or slash index, but I just want it to be slash. And he'll get just a message that says, welcome to this tutorial. So this is a resource we want to protect uh, via uh, JWT authentication. So I'm going to say uh, public uh, string uh, home and simply return um, welcome to JWT uh, tutorial. All right. Okay. So for now, we can't access this. If we, even if we try, we cannot because it's behind the Spring security wall and we have not completed our, our um, implementation of JWT. So we can't access this for now. For now, I recommend maybe pause the video, try it and see what you get. But uh, for, time sake, uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it. Now we need also an endpoint that will uh, be, that will ask, that will do a post to to send the username and password. Okay, so we call this endpoint authenticate endpoint. So it's going to be a post endpoint to to slash authenticate. Okay, and um, what will it return? Is going to return a string. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's going to return a JWT response. Sorry about that. So JWT response. Um, authenticate. Now this uh, function is going to expect you to send the JWT request in the request body as username and password. So at request body uh, is going to be JWT request, request, not response, request, JWT request. So JWT request, JWT request, which actually is simply username, username and password because we already did it, created it. Let me just remind you uh, in the models, we have JWT request is simply username and password. We have to send it in the request body of authenticate. If we, are, if we are going to slash authenticate, we must send username and password to do the authentication. All right, so let's continue. So now there is a lot of things that happens in this authentication endpoint, and I'm, I'm not going to copy and paste. I'm going to explain it because it's very important to understand. This authenticate endpoint takes the request extract the username and password, create a user detail, and then generate the token using this user detail. And remember, we generate a token using the utility class. That utility class takes the user details of username and password and generates your token. However, the first thing we need to do is to uh, carry out authentication by saying authenticate. Okay, so let's see. So um, now I'm going to say 
authentication-manager.authenticate because remember we created one authentication manager uh, at some point we created the bean I don't remember <laughs> but let me just check if I go back to configure this you see so we did a configuration here using authentication manager okay but for now we don't have the bean uh, available we are going to create the bean so that we can use it everywhere for now we can't use authentication manager here easily uh i think i'm mixing up things i i give me one second okay let's see let's just go ahead to to do it so i'm going to say authentication manager okay yeah so give me one second so yeah, so I was saying in this class, we are going to be using Authentication Manager. We're also going to be using JWT Utility. We're also going to be using um, uh, my user detail service. Three of them have to be used to be able to generate the token from the username and password. So I'm going to auto wire these three of them right here. Uh, let me just do uh, auto wired. So the first one is going to be private my user detail service, user detail service. The next one is, uh, is going to be private JWT utility, JWT utility. And the next one is going to be uh, authentication manager. Yeah. So for us to be able to auto buy it here, we have to create the bin, which we've not created. We're going to do it. So I'm going to say um, private uh, authentication manager builder authentication manager uh, authentication manager authentication manager all right so it gives us error because it's available but it's not a bean so i'm going to say authentication manager dot authenticate uh now what do you want to authenticate you want to authenticate uh taking the username and password from the request. So, of course, the code is just verbose, but uh, you're gonna say new username and password authentication token is not the same as JWT token. Uh, and the authentication token simply is authentication token from the username and password. We do, we do this without a token, even without JWT token you use you do this, okay? So uh, you give the uh, uh, the username and the password, and that is fine. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so now this authentication might actually succeed or fail, right? Mm -hmm. So it means that we need to try catch because in case it fails we have to throw an exception so let's try it and catch it if it fails so i'm going to say catch is going to be bad credentials exception e and if it fails what happens here let me see and put the semicolon here uh so if it fails we are simply going to throw one exception Troll new exception and it's going to be invalid. And you put in the exception and put in a semicolon. Okay, so we are throwing an exception, so we have to add exception signature to this method. So I'm going to just put my mouse here. Oh, sorry, I don't think you are seeing. Okay, so and then add exception signature. Okay, so it throws exception. All right, so I'm going to explain what is happening. I've explained it. So having authenticated the username and password, we now want to now go to the next step of generating the token. And to do that, we have to use user details because we don't use username and passwords are plain as it is. We need to uh, package it into our user details. So we need to create a new user detail. So I'm going to say final user details Final user, uh, sorry, let me just make sure. User details, user details, 
equal to uh, equal to user detail service, which is what we are to wire out here. And user detail service, remember it loads the username uh, from it loads the user from the username. So dot load user by username and specify the username, which is the uh, JWT request dot username. I think this should be clear. So we have a new user details now. And now we can use this user details to now generate the token. And that's the last step. I'm going to say final. Uh, it's going to be string. J uh, let me call it token equals to JWT utility dot generate token and passing the user details which you already created from the username. All right, so finally, we are going to return the token. So I think this is fair enough. So finally, we return the token. Uh, seconds. Yeah, so we have to return it as a JWT response, not as just token. So new JWT response of token. It took me some time to get my head around this. Even now you can see I'm trying to figure it out. But for now, I think it should be very clear uh, for now. So now the authentication manager, we don't have the bean. So we are going to go to the web configurer class and create the bean. So I'm going to go to this web configurer class and create the bean at bean. Uh, I think I can override and get it. So let me right click and say generate. So let me just shift this. So let me say generate um, actually override methods and it's going to be um, so we don't have it, I think. Oh, no, 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 I can't do it from here. So I simply need to create the bean manually. So I'm going to say bean. Yeah, yeah, we, I, can, I can get it. So I'm going to right click go to generate and go to override methods and it should be authentication manager uh bean authentication manager bean that is it here that is what you should do and annotate it with as bean annotation that's what you should do so this is what you do and at this point if you now go to uh, the home controller, the error goes away, as you can see right here. One more thing we need to do before we round off. We need to tell Spring Security to allow the slash authenticate endpoint without being authenticated. Because right now, all the endpoints, both slash authenticate and slash, all of them require authentication. But now we, we need to tell Spring Security to allow the slash authenticate Kit endpoint to be assessed without authentication because you have to assess it for you to get authenticated. And to do that, we need to go back to our security configurer class, which is this class right here, and create the configure make and configure it to allow uh, authentic uh, uh, permit the slash authenticate uh, URL or the the endpoint. So I'm going to say generate. And I'm going to click on override methods and it's going to be this time HTTP security right here and say, okay. So at this point, we now have to write our configuration. So it's going to be HTTP dot CREF. CREF means cross site request for three. So this is not going to be checked. Uh, so we simply allow slash authenticate because we know that that is safe. It's simply going to authentication endpoint to authenticate the user. So I'm going to disable C, uh, cross site request for three dot authorization, uh, authorize requests um, dot and matches. It's not and matches. It's going to be slash authenticate um, slash authenticate uh, dot permit all 
and any other requests should be authenticated okay perfect all right so this is where we are um and i think we are done at this point let's see so i'm going to save everything let me just make sure it's save save everything and i'm going to run this application right now so if it runs we are now going to uh go to slash authenticate so it says oh say one port is listening on port 8080 one okay so let's just go go to properties and set a new port i don't know what is listening as port 8080 server that port is equal to 8081 all right so i'm going to save everything and run it all over again so i'm going to run so if it runs and i hope it runs uh, as you can see it runs and tomcat is listening on port 8081 okay so for now if i just go to my browser and say localhost at port 8081 we don't get nothing uh let's go to slash so we don't get nothing okay all right so we need to do a post request to slash authenticate, passing in the username and password, and hopefully we get the token back. So normally I use Postman. So let me use Spotlight to find Postman. All right, so I'm opening Postman right now, and we are going to use Postman to do this request to slash authenticate at port 8081. Um, so I think, oh no, so so yeah so i think i tried to do it before so we have slash authenticate but it should be at port 8081 and we need to go to the body and we send username and password and in this case it's admin and password so let's do a post not a get and we post the username and password and hopefully we get an an, an, an a jwt token so i'm going to send and you can see that we received a JWT token. <coughs> okay, so what nice, where do we go from here? So <laughs> what does all this mean? So now we've authenticated. Now we need to use this token for subsequent requests. So for now, I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to stop here in the next part. We now see what we're going to do with this authentication token and be able to use it to make subsequent requests. I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's clear for you. Again, if you want to go to my website to get the step-by-step, -step, simply go to, let me just, if you look at the description box, I put the link, but if you go to kindsandthegenius.com and say slash spring boot, you come to my website slash, sorry, kindsandthegenius.com slash spring boot. So it takes you to spring boot website. You can just scroll down. You can see uh, JWT web token right here one and two so this is what we did sorry this advance so this is what we did now and the next part we are going to do two uh which is part two right here if you want to run ahead that is fine you can also try to do part two yourself and then when i release the next video it becomes easier for you so i'm going to stop here i remain kind on the tech pro and i'm always there for you